Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome, woohoo, welcome to another video. Today I am here with my May and June wrap up and it's it's been like two months since I've done a wrap up and I'm really excited to talk about all the books that I read in the past two months. I'm also really happy because I finally have summer vacation and I also heard that I um, succeeded in every subject that I had this year in biomedical sciences so I don't have to retake any finals and I, I did my first year of university like quite Quite well. I'm just really proud of myself. I'm happy that I have two months off because I, I was so, I was finished. I was so tired and now I have all the time to read again and I'm like so excited to fully focus on reading and YouTube again and I, I just cannot wait. I'd say let's just dive into the five books that I read in these past two months. Five doesn't seem like a lot but uh, keep in mind that I had so much stress during university. Like everything was Put, like all the deadlines were put into June and, and still I'm really happy with this number. First book or actually poetry collection that I finished in May was An Ocean of Grey by Kamalia Hassi and if you've watched my latest book haul you also saw this book in there. Mali is also what I call this author's name. Mali is like a really good friend of mine on bookstagram and on booktube. I've been following her for like two years right now. Her poetry collection was absolutely beautiful. This is the third poetry book that I've read and I I'm not only saying that I loved it because I know Mali personally, it's just that I felt so touched by all of these poems. It is about Malia's heartbreak and how she experienced it and all of her feelings are put into beautiful poetry uh, with gorgeous illustrations. Plus she published this book together with I believe two of her friends, which is also amazing to me. Even though I have never had a boyfriend myself, which is fortunate and unfortunate at the same time I'm guessing because that also means I've never experienced heartbreak but besides that I could still really feel with Molly like I could sort of feel her heartbreak I will leave a link into the description so that you guys can check out this poetry collection if you want to and then you can order it from their website Meraki Press so I gave this one a five out of five stars because in the two or three hours that I read this I could just really feel all the feels <laughs> the next book that I read in May I'm so proud of myself for being able to hold this one up is Traitor to the Throne by Alwyn Hamilton first of all I'm really proud of this because this one is 570 pages which was really intimidating for me but the reason that I'm like most proud of this is because it's a sequel it's the second book in a trilogy and I'm so bad at finishing trilogies like so so bad so the first book in this trilogy is a rebel of the sands and this is my favorite cover and one of my favorite books of like all time it is amazing it is about Amani she is this desert girl and she's been living in this really like boring town called Dustwalk. nothing happens and she has been meaning to flee out of the town because she has like a horrendous uncle and aunt and it's just not what she wants and then all of a sudden there's this really strange foreigner in her town and eventually he takes her on a journey and this sounds super vague but it's so good. It's like a YA fantasy trilogy all about political intrigue, rebellion, there are amazing characters. I I think they are all amazing. The world is so intriguing and Alwyn Hamilton's writing style is also amazing. She does like these stories, like these legends which are in this world and those are one of my favorite moments like in the books because I just love her fairy tale esque writing style. The sequel was like so much bigger than the first book. I mean it's like almost double and in this book you really get to know more of like the political interest the political world and even though that sounds kind of boring it totally wasn't and you get introduced to new characters and I am always kind of wary about that because they aren't the first characters that you have met but oh Sam is a new character and he is like amazing he's like such a charming douchebag in like a really good way things happen in this book which were just mind-blowing and I think I gave this one a four and a half out of five stars because Rebel of the Sands still gave me this sort of like nostalgic feeling because I reread this before this one and it's just it's my favorite I love it so much but this one was also so so good uh four and a half out of five stars maybe even five now that I'm considering it I just love this world and please go check it out it's my favorite trilogy until so far I'm almost 
finished with a third book. Then I read The Exact Opposite of OK by Laura Steven, and unfortunately I do not have the physical copy here with me. I have it in my dorm and I forgot to bring it with me, but this is I think one of my favorite books of 2018 until so far, and I truly truly mean this. This is an amazing feminist funny novel. It's like the funniest thing that I have ever ever read. I laughed out loud like so many times and that never happens to me with books, but Laura Stevens' humor is amazing. It's so funny and even though like there are so many jokes in this book, it really brings across an important message. This book is all about Izzy and Izzy hooks up with two guys in one evening and someone has made photos of her making out with one guy and those get leaked. The guy that she was also kissing with whose photos were taken, his dad is like a political person and Izzy's life gets sort of like thrown under a bus after this event. She gets slut shamed so incredibly much. Izzy is trying to find out together with her best friend um, who like made these photos and who put them online. So of course I gave this one a five out of five stars. I love this book with my whole heart and I cannot wait for the sequel which will come out in March 2019 if I'm correct. I will definitely be pre-ordering that one. So those were all the books that I read in May and now on to the books that I read in June. So the first one that I finished is The Truth About Alice by Jennifer Matthew and this is the dust jacket. The physical copy is in my dorm as well. Jennifer Matthew is the author of Moxie and um, because of one of my best friends, uh, Joni, she has a gorgeous bookstagram. I will leave a link to her bookstagram in the description bar down below as well. She's saw that the hardcover book of The Truth About Alice was only like four euros on Amazon. So I was like, okay, I need to buy that. I loved Moxie, um, but this one has a lot lower ratings than Moxie. This one has a 3.6 out of 5 on Goodreads. And normally I don't really buy books which have like such a low rating on Goodreads. It was a very small book. I think it was just 200 pages, but it took me like two to three weeks to read. Um, that's not a good sign. <laughs> Moxie was so much better. That's like also one of my favorite reads of this year. It's also a feminist contemporary novel. Do we see a pattern here? The truth about Alice is about Alice. Gosh, wow, how did you know that? <laughs> but rumor has it that Alice has slept with two guys in one night. It's not the same as the exact opposite of okay, I promise. Afterwards, there was a, a like a very disastrous car accident with one of those guys and he died in the accident. And you get to know the story told from five different perspectives, I think. In the end, you get to know the truth about Alice through Alice's perspective. I noticed that, oh, the characters were really the problem of this story. I think it was done on purpose, but still it annoyed me so much that the characters were so very stereotypical and um, they were also very aware of being stereotypical and being assholes, but still they did that and they sort of wanted to be like, oh yeah, I'm doing it and it's the right thing to do because blah, 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 blah. I didn't want to end up like I was before. So now I'm gonna be an asshole. I wanted this book to be so much more than it was and I think I gave this like a two and a half out of five stars. I I just wouldn't really recommend this if you were a fan of Moxie. This will definitely disappoint you, I think. <laughs> but yeah, that book took me way too long for the amount of pages that it had and I just really needed to get like another pick-me-up book which I could just read like very quickly and uh, I did that with this book and that is Save the Date by Morgan Matson. I have a signed first edition people and I'm really happy about that because look, Morgan Matson touched this book. Yes. <laughs> Morgan Matson is one of my favorite authors. I own all of her books. I have read three out of the five books that she has published, so it is my mission this summer to read all of her books. So this book is about Charlie and her family. During a span of three days, a wedding is gonna take place at her family home, and Charlie's whole family, which is really quite large, I believe there are seven people in her family, are coming together for this wedding, and everything that you could possibly think of goes wrong. <laughs> which on one hand was a lot of fun, but on the other hand was very frustrating sometimes because I was like, oh my god, no, not again. You know that feeling when you're like, oh my god, no, but you also kind of love it at the same time? That was me with this whole book. And the fun thing, which was also in this book, like when you remove the dust jacket of most of her books, there are like beautiful pictures of the characters, but this time it was a cartoon. And I was like, whoa, what the crap is this? Um, Charlie's family, like her mom, has been well known for this cartoon that she's been making. And the cartoon is also like incorporated in the story. The major thing of Save the Day 
hate is that it's super family driven, which is like a good thing, but in the beginning I definitely needed to get used to that because I was really expecting like a super, it is a super cute summer contemporary, but it's like a little less focused on romance. Like that is not the number one priority in this book. Number one is family and number two is like a little bit of a cutesy romance. It is my least favorite Morgan Matson book that I've read until so far, but still, very much enjoyable. I would 100% recommend this book to everyone and especially if you want to have like more of a contemporary book focused on family dynamics and just all those kind of shenanigans. And a wedding which was also a lot of fun. So I gave Save the Date a four out of five stars but I'm sort of like should I give it four and a half? So those were all the five books that I read in May and June. Let me know in the comments down below which books you have read from this pile or what other books that you have read in those two months. You guys can also follow me on all of my different social media pages of course I have Goodreads, Snapchat, Instagram plus an email address and links to those will all be in the description bar down below. Again thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!